Hello, everyone, and we're really glad that you're all here joining us. We have folks still rolling in um, as we're about to get started here on our Ready and Able to Work and Save panel that we are presenting to you today from the Able National Resource Center. Um, my name is Miranda Kennedy, and I'm the director of the Able National Resource Center, which is run by National Disability Institute, and we are funded by Prudential and Wells Fargo and JT Morgan Chase, and we, we thank our sponsors for their support of our center. Before we get started, I'm going to actually turn things over for just a couple minutes to Cheyenne Rivers, who is our project coordinator at the Able National Resource Center, and she has a few webinar logistics to cover with all of us. So, Cheyenne, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. The audio for today's panel discussion can be accessed using computer audio or by calling in by phone. If you select computer audio, please make sure your speakers are turned on or your headphones are plugged in. If you do not have sound capabilities on your computer or prefer to listen by phone, dial 1-929-205-6099, code 860-6679-5721. Real-time captioning is provided. The captions can be found by clicking on the closed captions icon in your Zoom controls at the bottom of the screen. American Sign Language ASL interpretation is provided. Note, if you do not see the captions, which we're not seeing right now, we're working on that just to let everybody know. After clicking the button or the ASL interpreters on the screen, please alert the host, that's me, um, via the chat box and hang on for that, it'll be coming soon. Technical assistance and questions. If you experience technical difficulties during the webinar, use the chat box to send a message to the NDI host or email me, Cheyenne C. Rivers at ndi-inc.org with subject line webinar help. For ABLE related questions, please check out the resources at ablenrc.org or email info at ablenrc.org. All right, thank you, Cheyenne, for covering that information. And now I'm going to cover just a little bit of an introduction to ABLE National Resource Center. Some of you are very familiar with this, um, but we just have a few slides and we'll have some new information, even for those of you who are very familiar with our work, who we are and what we offer. But for those of you who may be joining us for the first time, we wanted to give just a little bit of basic background and share a little bit of the resources uh, before we dive into the panel discussion today so that you're equipped in case you have any number of questions. Um, you know where to go, what to check out. So the ABLE National Resource Center or ABLE NRC, who we are is the leading comprehensive source of objective, independent information about federal and state related ABLE programs and activities, including guidance on tax advantaged ABLE savings accounts. It's our mission to educate, promote, and support the positive impact that ABLE can make on the lives of millions of Americans with disabilities and their families. The ABLE National Resource Center website can be found at www.ablenrc.org. And I've listed here just a few of the resources you can find on our website. And these are hyperlinked as well. Cheyenne will be sharing a link to this PowerPoint so that you can take that away with you today. But what you can find are ABLE frequently asked questions as well as ABLE decision guides, which I'm gonna talk more about in just a moment. You can find stories from spotlighting the, the stories and the strategies that ABLE account owners are using, as well as the stories from ABLE family members who are supporting an ABLE account owner and making the most use of their ABLE account. So those are really worth checking out. They feature our ABLE ambassadors who you're gonna hear from today, a few of them. We also have our Able to Save podcasts. Uh, we have two new bra brand new podcasts that we have on ABLE and self-employment, but we have lots of great podcasts worth checking out. We have any number of ABLE webinars, such as the one you're on right now, and you can register for upcoming webinars. You can also check out a lot of webinars on demand on topics you might be 
interested in learning more about. We have our achievable newsletter. It's a bi-monthly newsletter. Uh, we just had a newsletter come out two days ago. I hope you've checked it out. It is focused on employment uh, in honor of the month that we're in right now, um, National Disability Employment Awareness Month. We also have uh, one of the first tools we ever developed, we have a series of ABLE state comparison tools to compare all the different ABLE programs uh, and what you can find there, as well as spotlights on the ABLE programs uh, that are definitely worth checking out. We have another one coming up in November I'll share at the end of our, our presentation and panel today. We also have a series of toolkits for those of you who might be employers or service providers, who might be doing outreach to different communities, definitely check out our ABLE toolkits. They, they have great information that can be shared, or even those of you who might want to share information about ABLE with others in your network, check out our toolkits. So I do want to mention, this is the last slide I want to cover on our resources, but I thought it might be very helpful because frequently we get questions on our panels that can be answered in a lot of our decision guides. So our decision guides are fairly new in the last year or so, and they continue to evolve. We have a brand new one and we're working on another one. Um, but what these decision guides are is they are a series of step-by-step -step guides on key ABLE topics that provide you with tailored information and a pathway to help you get an answer or achieve a better outcome with your ABLE account. And these guides are meant to help increase your ABLE understanding and assist you in effective decision-making. Our very first one, it's the easiest one, is Am I ABLE eligible? This would help you figure out if you or a family member might be eligible for an ABLE account. Uh, we have a selecting and opening an ABLE account decision guide that can assist in that process of selecting and opening an ABLE account as there, there are a number of options out there. We have a decision guide on understanding ABLE account savings and public benefits, the interaction there, uh, which is of, of course of great importance to folks who are especially on means tested benefits and how their ABLE account uh, doesn't count against their eligibility for those uh, mean tested programs. We have a decision guide on how to manage an ABLE account, how to make the most of that ABLE account once you've opened it. We have a decision guide on how to find funds to save in an ABLE account. We often hear from people, gosh, how do I find the money to save in that ABLE account? This will share strategies with you. Some of them are fairly easy to implement too. Um, and we've learned them over the years in our work with our ABLE account owners and family members who served as advisors and ambassadors for us. We have a decision guide on how to determine whether something is a qualified disability expense. And as such, if you can use your ABLE account funds to pay for it. Uh, quick hint, this is very broad. It's, it's not, but it's worth checking out this decision guide and having confidence in what you're spending those funds on to achieve a better life experience with your ABLE account. These last two here at the bottom that are in green, the hyperlinks, we have an a decision guide on ABLE accounts and working people with disabilities, as well as our very newest decision guide, which just launched this week, Ready and Able to Work and Save, which is also the title of today's panel. So check out those decision guides, especially given it's October and National Disability Employment Awareness Month. We also have, and we just want to let you know, coming soon, we'll have this by no later than January, we will have our ABLE Accounts and Special Needs Trusts Decision Guide. And what we have there is um, we've worked with the Special Needs Alliance, ABLE National Resource Center has, to develop this guide for folks. So it is worth checking out. We've had comparison charts, but a guide's a, a great way to go with this. So with that, I am going to go ahead and go to the next slide here and welcome you all to our event celebrating National Disability Employment Awareness Month, which is celebrated every October um, and honored by US Department of Labor and their Office of Disability Employment Policy, supporting and, and promoting information around disability and employment. Um, and this month's theme is on disability, uh, is part of the equity equation. So what you're gonna hear today from four ABLE account owners who are um, our ambassadors at the National Resource Center, you're gonna hear from four ABLE account owners from different professions 
who are in various stages in their work lives. The thing they have in common is they're all using their ABLE accounts in their employment journey to achieve a higher level of success. Our goal for today is that you come away with an increased understanding of how an ABLE account can help ABLE eligible working people with disabilities now and into the future, including planning for retirement, which is really something that many people with disabilities have, have that, that long-term vision and that ability to plan for retirement and save for retirement uh, is really supported by an ABLE account and, and it's kind of a newer vision and opportunity. So we're really excited to be talking about the entire journey, including saving and planning for retirement. So what we're gonna cover in our panel discussion will be strategies to support employment, career advancement and retirement planning with an ABLE account and examples of ABLE accounts supporting working age people with disabilities. Um, you'll hear all of that. Um, and then of course we have our ABLE decision guide ready and able to work and save. So with that, I'm gonna be introducing our panelists who are joining us, who are so pleased to have here with us. You'll be hearing from Taylor Carty, who is a research assistant, from Simon Cantos, who's a mechanical engineer, from Eric Cardenas, who's a lecturer too, and from Emily Munson, who's a policy director. I'll be giving you a little bit more background on each of them as we go around and, and ask our panel a series of questions and get some of their insights on how they're using their ABLE account and suggestions they have might have for you. So with that, I am going to stop sharing and I'm gonna ask Cheyenne support in spotlighting if we can bring Taylor Cardi onto the screen with us. Hello, Taylor. It's Hi, so Miranda. nice to see you. You too. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. So Taylor, the thing I want to share with everyone is that Taylor has been an ABLE National Resource Center ambassador since 2019. Um, she graduated from the University of California, Berkeley, with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Molecular and Cell Biology. Taylor receives vocational rehabilitation services and currently works as a research assistant, as I mentioned, and that's at Syracuse University. And right now she's considering her next career move and, and there's excitement at that stage in your life. Uh, we're happy to be featuring you as our ambassador who's at that point in your career path. But Taylor wanted to share that she was initially receiving supplemental security income, SSI, but was switched over to childhood disability benefits, what used to be termed disabled adult child benefits in October, 2017. And with that, Taylor was thrown into the world of transition from SSI to SSDI, Medicaid and Medicare. And through her own research and help from her family and the Department of Vocational Rehabilitation, she quickly became knowledgeable about the different rules, work support programs, and legislation that has so profoundly affected her life. So Taylor, I know you're gonna share a little bit more about yourself when, while answering some of these questions that we have for you. But the first question I have for you to just open us up is why did you open your ABLE account and what does having an ABLE account mean to you? Um, so initially after I graduated college, I knew I wanted to pursue more schooling, um, but I also needed to keep my Medi-Cal benefits. And at the time um, there was the $2,000 asset limit. Um, and I just, I didn't want to jeopardize my Medi-Cal in order to be able to save. And I was looking and I was researching and I finally came across ABLE accounts and I decided this is what I'm looking for. Um, and just real quick, because not everyone knows what Medi-Cal is. Taylor's right. in California. So the CAL at the end of Medi-Cal actually stands for California, right? What exactly are those benefits for a national audience, Taylor? What are you speaking about? Um, I'm speaking about like in terms of Medicaid, um, the program, and nationally, um, in many states, Medicaid has a $2,000 asset limit. Um, that if you want to keep receiving Medicaid benefits, then you can't have more than $2,000 in assets. Um, but when I initially 
was searching into ABLE accounts and I decided to open one. Um, one of the very first, in order to open an ABLE account, you need to have the onset of your disability be before the age of 26. And I qualify for an ABLE account because I have cerebral policy. Um, and so it was really easy to open one. Um, I think it took like 10 minutes for me, but um, yeah, I just started to save what I could into it. And what that means for you then is the ability to save above that $2,000 yeah. limit. Yes. So how is your ABLE account helping to support you as you advance in your career, Taylor? So right now I've been very fortunate in that everything I've earned um, I've put into my April account and I haven't taken anything out yet um, for expenses, but because I was planning to use it for schooling, I'm actually very lucky in that I've come across scholarships that um, may help cover my schooling. So for at the moment, um, I'm planning to use it in the long term um, for retirement. Which is significant. And that's a shift too, because that's yeah. what you hadn't originally planned on using your right. account for back when we met each other over three years ago. Yeah. But now that you've got this new opportunity, you can use those funds in so many different ways. And Absolutely. the fact that someone, Taylor, you're in your mid twenties and you're planning for retirement with your ABLE account. Yeah. But <laughs> I think my advice like would be to start as early as you can because of compound interest and everything. Like every little bit helps. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know that I was, I was on top of things back when I was in my twenties as you are Taylor yeah. with this, <laughs> but can you tell us a little bit about what you're using able funds to purchase now that would have been difficult or perhaps even impossible without your able account? Is that saving for retirement, you know, with the benefits that you've needed? Would um, that have been possible? So, I mean, if right now, um, like I said before, I'm not using um, my ABLE accounts for any purchases now, um, but maybe like once I get, um, depending on how certain factors play out, if something happens where I need to use the ABLE account for um, schooling tuition, um, I know I'll have that money. So it's a comfort to me, but Again, um, I'm going to try really hard, um, yeah, to just to allocate most of it for retirement, um, just because I know, given that I am still in my 20s, uh, I have some time um, and that I can, if I can just let it sit, um, it'll just grow. Um, right. And yeah. you have some invested in, so certainly writing yeah. around the markets as they plan pan out over decades, right. that can look different than the immediate term we're in. <laughs> it definitely can. Okay. So I'm wondering too, and we're going to come back to you at the end, uh, but before I wrap up our section here, can you share one or two specific strategies for how you're using your ABLE account long-term as you advance in your career, as you plan for long-term needs, such as retirement? And, and something I'm thinking about here too, Taylor, and I think the audience can benefit from knowing, you know, you're planning for retirement, but your ABLE account funds, if you need it for down payment on a home or some immediate need that comes up, those would be available to you. And it's not like drawing out of a retirement account where you would be penalized because you were far younger than your 60s. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think if I needed for a disability related expense um, and if, if unexpected plans came up, like it's, again, it's like, it's a real comfort to me knowing I just have that available. Um, and that I can just use um, in California, there's the option of the debit card, which I have, um, and that I can take it um, just to take funds out of my ABLE account. Um, but going to also your other questions, like um, just in terms of the long term, yeah. if I needed some of the funds to purchase a house or whatever it may be, um, then that's totally an option too. Um, and they provide so many options, ABLE accounts. So it's great depending on what your situation is, um, especially if you're a family and just, or someone else. Right. 
Well, thank you, Taylor. I'm going to come back around to you when we do our uh, round robin at the very end for some final words of advice from you. But for now, we're going to go over to Simon Cantos, who's one of our other ambassadors. And Simon, you joined us a little bit more recently, but it's really nice to see you. Hi, thank you for nice being here today too. with us. So I'm going to introduce Simon a little, and then you'll hear more from him, um, and we'll have some questions for him as well. But I want you all to know, so Simon's been an ABLE and NRC ambassador since 2021. That's also when Simon opened his ABLE account. <laughs> so he is a mechanical engineer who lives in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, a graduate of Villanova University. He's been a senior sales engineer for Carrier Air Conditioner Company since 2013, and a Pennsylvania ABLE account owner also since early 2021. Born in Sydney, Australia, Simon's parents moved the family to the United States in 1990 and became naturalized as U.S. citizens 11 years later in 2001. In his previous work as a contractor for companies like Mars Electronics and Motorola, Simon transitioned on and off SSA disability benefits as his income from work fluctuated. Now, Simon works full-time with Carrier, and Simon doesn't receive SSI or SSDI benefits, and the only public benefit that he receives now is from Pennsylvania's Medicaid buy-in program and SSA work support. So, Simon, that's just a little bit of background so folks can understand a little bit of your journey. I know you're going to be sharing more with us here, but really... The first thing I want to ask you is why did you open your ABLE account? It was only last year. It feels like a very long time ago. <laughs> and, and, um, and, what, and what does it having it, it mean to you? Well, um, as you mentioned, I was uh, I am in a uh, Medicare buy-in program. Now, uh, what's been happening is over the years, uh, due to my career at Carrier, uh, my, my income from carrier was approaching the income limit for the Medicare buy-in program. And even offsetting some of the medical expenses I had, I was always flirting with the limit. And what happened was there was a point where I not only exceeded the income limit, but I exceeded the asset limit as well. Mm -hmm. So having an ABLE account was able to bring me well below the income and asset limit, and I'm able to maintain my uh, Medicare buy-in program and still retain those benefits. Mm -hmm. And in terms of how, can you talk a little bit about, I know it's been interesting, some of the ways, and it, it might not be things most folks would think about, you and I've talked quite a bit, but can you share with our audience how your ABLE account is helping to support you in your life and in your career. You're a little bit older than Taylor, so you're a little sure. further along uh, in your career journey. She's at the pathway of choosing different options, and you're you're solidly in a career, um, but you still have options, certainly. And what might your ABLE account be doing or have done for you, and what might it do in the future for you? Um, I'd say, like, at least in, like, the short term, it has served as, like, a little bit of a security sort of flush funds, like just in case something happened. Um, I like to prepare for like, you know, a contingency where like something happens and I need to, you know, have a fund to kind of cover any emergencies, like uh, say something's wrong with my adapted vehicle or, you know, God forbid, like something happens at my job and I, you know, I lose my job or I'm, at a point where, you know, maybe like just in case I need to, you know, change careers and having that ABLE account like gives me a little bit of security where like should something happen, I have that ABLE account to kind of cover myself for any contingency. And I know that's even come up with purchases that someone might not necessarily think, you know, we've talked about when you've needed things with the car, you know, yeah. your vehicle. Um, because guess what? You had to get, you know, there's some working from home we all did and you did, but some mm -hmm. of the getting to the office or getting around and and yeah. when you need to make repairs, I know that you'd made a purchase you weren't expecting, but you had the funds in your able account. Can you share that example? Yeah, um, there was an instance uh 
I believe this happened last year. Um, I there was something going on with my adapted vehicle, and uh, all of a sudden, I got a bill of like almost two thousand dollars that I did not expect at all. Um, I didn't have those kind of funds with like my regular checking account or even my regular savings account, but I had it in my able account and. Thankfully, I had that because if I didn't, um, I'd be in a lot of trouble. Uh, I wouldn't be able to go anywhere. So luckily, I had that account and I established that like a few months before I, you know, actually started, you know, the ABLE account itself. So I had that in place and that was yeah. very useful in a very unexpected situation. Yeah. Especially given, you know, you might be planning for long term, but sometimes things come up and being able yeah. to use it also as an emergency fund source where you're not withdrawing funds from somewhere else and taking big penalties for withdrawing too early. So yeah. thanks for thanks for sharing that example, Simon. Um, can you talk about how um, what you're using your ABLE funds to purchase now um, in terms of any supports or services other than paying for car repair, things like that. Are you using it any other way now or are you just really um, saving? I am, I am using it for savings. Uh, you know, I do like to plan out for the long term. Um, but, you know, I also want to kind of make sure, like, you know, if something happens, like, I have that, you know, funds there to cover, like, anything like I know that uh, pretty soon I need to get a new power chair and unfortunately with the resources that I have I know I'm going to have to pay part of that like out of pocket so right. I have that able account there to kind of cover that difference yeah I think we wrote a spotlight that included um the details around all the different funding mm -hmm. sources and then how able account how your able accounts really going to supplement it's not going to replace yeah. you do have some funding towards that yeah. power chair replacement but not nearly what you need so sure. being able to use your able account to augment to supplement the other funding sources and resources you can pull on can make the difference between having that replacement or not kind of similar to the car you know the yeah, things there's... we need in life right yep there are certain features on like parachairs where the only way you can really get it is if you pay it out of pocket. Mm -hmm. So um, unfortunately, there are some features on the parachair that I need that uh, aren't exactly entirely covered by insurance. Uh, even the Medicare buy-in that I program that I am enrolled in, uh, it doesn't cover everything. So I have to make up the difference. You know, and I think too about even sometimes when there are services or supports that can be paid for by other programs that folks can access, something that Taylor and I, who we just talked to, have talked about. Sometimes if you just need to pay for like uh, something that's quick that might cost you $65 or a small enough amount that, gosh, do you want to wait for a month or longer for that expense to be approved so you get the thing you need? When you're just like, well, maybe I just pay it out of my ABLE account funds, right? That way you're not holding up your life waiting for something that you do have the funds for in this ABLE account. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so lastly, I want to see if you can share with our audience one or two specific strategies for how you're using your ABLE account longer term. Um, as you advance in your career or plan for longer term needs, such as retirement, what are some strategies you're using, either in how you're investing your accounts or how you're using them or monitoring them, how you're putting funds in maybe to the ABLE account? You know, how are you finding the ways to, to move that forward to build that resource for yourself? Uh, I do uh, put in money from like uh, my paycheck or like I get bonuses every once in a while. So I will actually kind of take like a large chunk of that and put that into my ABLE account as a way to kind of build up the funds that way. Um, some of it I have invested. Um, I know early on I, you know, was experimenting with that and I, you know, didn't come out as well as I, I hoped. So I'm readjusting that so that way uh, that's not as bad, but um, I'm still working on that. Uh, mm -hmm. I am using the funds from there to, uh, you know, like I said before, to, you know, kind of 
uh, you know, provide some funding for retirement. Uh, but I also want to have like some there just as a just in case something happens kind of fun to like, uh, you know, the upcoming power chair that I'll, I know I'll, I'll eventually have to get or, you know, yeah. hopefully something doesn't happen with my vehicle again, uh, where I have to use it, you know, the funds for that or, you know, even like just as a contingency, like, if something were to happen at carrier, or, you know, if there was a, you know, need for me to change careers, I, you know, I have funds there in, in place just in case something happened. Yeah. So really just kind of peace of mind, really, with having yeah. that extra cushion and resource, something that can grow, it's tax advantaged. Um, but as we talked about, uh, the portion that is invested, because you can have it in a FDIC insured checking account. Um, and then there's also the investment option, which you can have your money make money. But along with that, you know, just like anyone else in America who's, who's got investments, you have to ride the stock market in longer term. That that generally pans out. But um, we've we've all seen and experienced um, what's been happening lately, and understanding that those investments, while there's an opportunity to grow the money, there's also potential for some losses too. So factoring that in. Correct. Well, do you have do you have any like just strategies? that you're using you think the audience needs to know about that they might not just know generally that you've kind of landed upon you you've come in and got to benefit from working with a lot of able ambassadors is there anything you picked up from anyone maybe edward uh i would say like um if you're beginning your career like have that in place early on um i know back when i was still a contractor like if i if an able account existed back then, uh, things would have been a lot easier, uh, especially as I was going from one job to another, one company to another. Um, you know, the gap between those jobs weren't wasn't exactly short. Yeah. So having that, if I if an able account like existed at the time, which uh, right. unfortunately it didn't, yeah. um, that would have made things a lot easier, uh, especially on my end. Uh, you know, just in terms of like finances covering like, you know, certain expenses and all that as I was kind of in between jobs. Um, it's something that I, you know, I have echoed to a lot of the people in my community, which is the uh, congenital muscular dystrophy community. Uh, you know, once the ABLE account like kind of came in place, it was such a such a boon and such a, you know, godsend for, you know, yeah. a lot of people. That's something the audience doesn't know, but, you know, within your community and your networks, you're kind of an elder statesman, Simon. And there's mm -hmm. many younger folks who look to you in terms of like that level of independence and, you know, career pathway opportunity, like the ability to drive independently and save for and purchase vehicles to be able to do so and get out in the world. Um, so sharing that kind of guidance and, of course, that vision of if an ABLE account had been around when you were a lot younger, how that might have helped you with your career. I think that's really good for our audience to hear, too, because some folks might not be as far along as you are. They might be, <laughs> and if so they can use your strategies, but thinking about, you know, the support it can provide when you're figuring out your career um, is really helpful. And I'm going to have another question for you along with the round robin at the end, but thank you for sharing this, Simon. Um, and for now, I am going to go next up to Eric. And so we'll welcome Eric Cardenas. Hi, hi Eric. So I'm going to introduce everyone to you, Eric. So Eric, you have been an ABLE NRC ambassador since 2021. Um, along with Simon. You're fairly new here with us. Um, but Eric is an advocate for Texas Society of Interpreters for the Deaf and through the Texas Association of the Deaf, and also a lecturer too at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Eric is a first generation Mexican American and a member of both the deaf and LGBTQ communities and is the first member of his community to graduate from college. 
Eric went on to earn a master's degree in sign language education at Gallaudet University and is currently in a doctoral program. Um, and you recently got married. You've been incredibly busy, Eric, <laughs> in addition to joining us as an ambassador. So my first question for Eric is, Eric, can you share with our audience, why did you open your ABLE account? And what does having an ABLE account mean to you? Yes. So first I wanna say hello to everyone. And you have many good questions. Okay, wait, I'm gonna ask for my team to help me. Kelly, can you help me? Mm -hmm. I got it, okay. Before, yeah, okay. so I opened up my, I'll take over to it, that's okay. Um, yeah, I opened up my account several years ago. Um, I had a couple concerns with my savings account. I was using my SSDI uh, benefits at that time. And so I had a couple concerns just because I didn't want to lose my benefits um, while I was studying in graduate school uh, for my degree. So when I opened up my ABLE account and I was able to get that up, um, I was able to go ahead and apply and I was able to just really do a lot of research and to learn on my own as far as how I was able to use that and how important it was to be able to grow your savings while you're studying and you're in school. So yeah, now I, I've just seen the evidence and how it's been such a huge benefit for me now over these couple of years. I can just, I couldn't remember your second question. What was that second one I oh. think you asked? Oh yeah, what does having an ABLE account mean to you? Yeah, great question. Um, I would say an ABLE account for me is just a feeling or a sense of, it's a big investment in myself. I feel like able, it's as if I'm investing in myself. So yes, I'm monetarily investing in an account, but I feel like it's also a huge benefit and it's tenfold as far as what I have also gained as well. Well, and I'm gonna ask you some more specifics around that, Eric, to share what that means. But I think that comes with the next question I have, which is how is your able account helping to support you in your life? And I emphasize in your life, and in your career. And I might be hinting at your wedding too. Yes, yeah, 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 great question. So with my ABLE account, I was actually able to, so I got married, um, I'm a married man and um, I married a, a guy from Colombia and we were able to use our ABLE account to pay for a lot of our, our needs that we need, especially as far as communication needs. Um, we were able to use that money for um, interpreters, be able to provide interpreters during our wedding. Um, we were able to purchase a house. Um, so it was really exciting um, being able to do that purchase of just not having an apartment anymore to actually be a homeowner. And I feel like we've been, I've been waiting, we're actually waiting for the house to be ready. So we'll actually um, be moving in, in soon. Um, you know, the economy has just been kind of all over the place right now. But yeah, so we've been able to invest in that. Um, I've also used it to buy books for my school. I've used it for my hearing aids. Um, I've been able to pay bills with that money, electric bills, utility bills, also things with my dog, my dog's deaf as well. Um, so it's a, a service dog, an emotional support animal as well. So I've been able to pay for dental care, specialized food for them, um, care whenever I'm training or I'm flying for business, we have to pay for care for our pets. So there's been so many things that I have felt so supported with my account that honestly, without it, I don't know what I would do. Well, and that's so many different things. And Eric, you're at such an interesting point in your life. You have so many things going on recently, married, purchasing a home in a doctoral program. There are a lot of moving parts there. I, I love that you mentioned the range of different things you're using your ABLE account for, because one of our decision guides is on what is a qualified disability expense out of your ABLE account. And it doesn't have to directly relate to the disability. It's very broad. I encourage people to check out that decision guide because all of the things that Eric has mentioned, our audience, you should know there's so much flexibility. And really the ABLE account, again, it stands for 
achieving a better life experience, able. And so I think with Taylor, with Simon, now with Eric, really sharing, you know, the range of things and the flexibility of what you can do with an ABLE account. It's really important to hear from all of you directly, Eric, um, and, and Simon and Taylor before you. Um, I'm wondering, my last question for you, before we go to Emily and our round robin at the end, is can you share one or two specific strategies with our audience, something they might be able to do or think of doing uh, for a, that you're using your ABLE account for longer term um, as you advance in your career and as you plan for longer term needs such as retirement? Yeah. Yeah, I would say for me, as far as my ABLE account um, and how I view it as long term, um, I would say, you know, just kind of taking it all in as far as my experience and, uh, for example, using it for my certification test. Um, in my field that I'm going to be working um, in, in the deaf community in the hearing world, um, I would love to be able to be an ASL teacher, and I also would love to be able to do interpreting. I would love to become a certified deaf interpreter as well. In order to do that, I have to pass an exam um, in order to be able to become either a sign language interpreter and also to get a, a certification to be a, a certified deaf interpreter. And a lot of that stuff is just web-based um, accessibility certifications, a wide range of stuff, and I'm very interested in obtaining those. So they come at a cost. And so I've been saving money to be able to cover those costs, to be able to get all of those certifications to really advance, advance my career. Um, and so that's been a huge help. And I obviously I have a lot of enthusiasm and motivation around that for myself and for my career. Um, and then I would say, secondly, I really want to be able to save more with ABLE um, to be able to get a second condo in Washington, DC. Um, I feel like that's my second home. And so I love the deaf community there. Um, and so um, the LGBTQ plus community, I feel like I'm just happy here. So I would say my goal would be able to, yes, re well, I would say retirement, I'm, I'm not thinking retirement. Yeah, it's in the back of my mind, but I, I have other things elsewhere in, in the forefront of my mind for the time being. Yeah. You're young and you have a long way to go. I know if I can share, I know the, I won't name it, but the ABLE program you're with, your employer's uh, retirement account for you is also with that same, that same investment group. So that puts everything all together for you and makes it easier for you. So um, you have a little bit of that being taken care of by your employer and you're, and you're quite young yet, Eric, uh, at the beginning of so many exciting things in your life. Um, and I think you've shared some really good strategies in terms of, you know, that are employment related. You know, if you have a certification you need for work, um, it's, it's some of those things. There might be services or support someone is receiving. But if you're not, like Eric, you would need to pay that for yourself. You can use these funds for those things to advance in your career and achieve your career goals. And that's really significant because that costs money <laughs> and, and able funds in your account can pay for that. Okay. Thank you, Eric. We're going to go to Emily and I'll bring you back in, in a, in a few minutes, Eric. But for now, I want to introduce everyone to our final panelist today, Emily Munson. So Emily, hello. I'm going, to tell, I'm going to tell everyone just a little bit about you, Emily, um, before I before I ask you a few questions as well. So, folks, you should know that Emily has been one of our ambassadors since 2019. Like Taylor, they were in the same class of ambassadors. Um, a disability rights attorney with Indiana's Protection and Advocacy Agency, Emily is also an able account owner and champion for able accounts for other working people with disabilities who like herself, can use these tax advantage savings accounts to cover qualified disability exp expenses. Uh, and like we've been talking about, it really achieve that better life experience. So in her role at the Protection and Advocacy Agency, Emily leads the employment team. She teaches people with disabilities, their family members and support teams about leveraging SSA work incentives to develop their market power as working people with disabilities who have money to spend. 
Emily, certainly you practice what you preach, um, or perhaps more appropriately, you put your money where your mouth is by doing the protection and advocacy work that you love while filling a, while living that life filled with international travel and cultural adventures that, that feed your foodie soul, Emily. So it's nice to be here introducing you to our audience. Um, and I have my first question for you. Why did you open your ABLE account, Emily? And what does having an ABLE account mean to you? So for me, ABLE accounts really are about autonomy um, of the owner, the person with a disability. Because of those Medicaid asset limits that were mentioned earlier, I think by Taylor um, and others, the only way an individual with a disability could have over the asset limit would be putting money into a trust and then they would be subject to the whims of the trustee. But with an able account, I get to decide where I spend my money. Um, so it, it, it's really about me directing my life as I see fit. Um, and I also agree with Simon that ABLE accounts also provide people with disabilities a sense of security. Um, you know, financial gurus like Dave Ramsey and whatnot talk about the importance of having six months of expenses saved away somewhere. Um, and so an ABLE account is my opportunity to protect myself moving forward. Well, and can you talk too about how, I mean, especially considering the work you do on the employment team and the advocacy you do and how you do promote ABLE accounts, as all of our ambassadors do, why this is a useful tool. Um, but can you talk about how your ABLE account is helping to support you in your life and career and perhaps how you're seeing it help others? Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that I like to travel. Um, one thing that I use my ABLE account for is. Well, let me back up a little bit first. So I'm a person with spinal muscular atrophy um, and I require assistance with all activities of daily living. So when I travel, I need to travel with at least one caregiver. Um, so I've used my ABLE account to uh, pay my caregiver's airfare and hotel expenses to go with me to Iceland, for example. Um, I am using my ABLE account to save for a house. Um, I'm really excited for Eric that he just got to make that happen in his life. Um, and another thing that's really neat is I'm uh, looking at PhD programs, applying to them right now. And as I was looking through uh, the NRC's decision guides, I saw a new, a new thing I didn't know, which is that ABLE accounts are exempt from consideration on the FAFSA form. So that was a really great tidbit that right. potentially- and, that, and FAFSA stands for Federal Application for, uh, Free Application for Federal Student Aid. So that's the acronym FAFSA. And it's what you apply for when you're looking for student aid to be able to go to any kind of um, advanced educational program. So the fact that the ABLE account funds, your ABLE account funds wouldn't count against your eligibility to access some of those resources, that's significant. And I know we were just talking about Taylor and the role she played with that, Emily. Yeah, um, you mentioned that Taylor is the one that really pushed for that. So thank you, Taylor. <laughs> yes, applause to Taylor. Taylor was, as a student and uh, working with other students, um, as an ambassador with us back in 2019, had said, you know, it's exempt from eligibility for from so many of these programs, the funds in an ABLE account. But when you're applying for student aid to advance in your, you know, education and career, it's not listed as being exempt there. So we worked with US Department of Education to get that clarified. And now there's a very short little and ABLE accounts on page nine of the FAFSA guidance on what is excluded um, as uh, resources from eligibility from the, that type of aid. 
So she didn't mention it when we talked earlier, but uh, shout out to Taylor for helping us to identify that as an issue and advance on that in our work here at Able NRC. So, and that will help you, Emily, now. See, it, it all comes around. And she was in the same class as amb of ambassadors, Emily. My shout out to you guys as well, because the decision guides are incredible, as are the other resources that are available very easily online. Um, you know, as an ambassador, I think I know a lot about ABLE, but there's always more to learn. So even if you think you know everything, uh, keep going back to the website because there are always updates. Well, and we work with all of our ambassadors. You all are four of them to help us identify what would be helpful to folks. What are some strategies? What are some tools? And we keep those updated and keep advancing them. But that's through our work with our ABLE account owners and family members. So that's really, it's a, it's a joint effort here. We're all part of all that, but thank you, Emily. I'm gonna do just a very quick round robin in our last 10 minutes here and ask all four of our panelists to come in and just in a sentence or two as we're wrapping up here. Um, and I'll start with you, Emily, since you're, you're here on the screen with me. Just what advice would you give our audience who may be thinking about working or who are working and wish to advance in their careers about why they should consider opening and saving and investing in an ABLE account? Um, I, I really think that money is power, frankly, and having the ability to access your funds um, and, and choose where they go, there is a wide variety of options in ABLE programs um, will really support the decisions that you want to make in your life and will enable them. Yeah, that, that's a really good, succinct answer and, and powerful one, too. Um, I'll go, I'll ask Simon if you want to hop on and share what advice you would give our audience who are thinking about working or who are working and wish to advance in their careers. Why should they consider, you know, opening that ABLE account and investing in that? Uh, opening that, opening an ABLE account will allow you to have the ability to you know, get an ideal job and still maintain your benefits. And, you know, as I kind of drummed before, it gives you that secure, sort of safety net and sense of security that, you know, you can kind of prepare yourself for like, yeah. you know, any contingency, like any emergency, you know, just yeah. you know, yeah. anything that can go wrong, you can cover it. Thank you, Simon. All right. Eric, I'm going to pull you back on the screen and just ask as your last thoughts, what advice you would give our audience who are thinking about working or maybe they are working and want to advance in their careers. Why do you think they should consider opening and saving and investing in an ABLE account? I think your answer from earlier was so perfect, how you're investing in yourself, but, but what other advice would you give? Yeah, I would say as far as my advice, well, yeah, I would say just go ahead and open up an ABLE account. Obviously, you can do that at any time. Um, you don't have to know everything. Uh, just when you're ready, you can go ahead and do that. And they're there for you. I feel like they're family too, you know, or you're planning for your your future. And I just want to encourage people that, you know, as a deaf individual, um, or maybe if you know somebody in the deaf community, or if you are a deaf individual, encourage word of mouth, you know, to get them to open up an account and to help them realize that they're not stuck if they're looking for help, you know, how to take steps to be able to open up an account. Um, they, you can do it on your own. You can do it with your family. Um, you know, I signed up for one myself and, um, you know, I just felt like it was a great opportunity to take advantage of that. And yeah, I wish I would have known what it was when I was younger, but you know, whether you are working, whether you're employed or not working right now, currently, it's it's a good time to do it because that time will come eventually. Yeah. And, and the piece about knowing about it when you were younger, the first stable program didn't open until summer of 2016. So it's a fairly new resource. 
if you're just learning about it now, you haven't missed out on too many years of opportunity of building that ABLE account. But like Eric said, you know, a doctoral student, as he is, uh, and, and Emily looking into PhD programs, you all don't have to get a PhD in ABLE accounts. You can learn as you go, and we're here to help. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yep. Okay. So Taylor, we'll bring you, we started with you and we're going to end with you. So just what advice would you give, especially as someone you're at the beginning of really you've done a lot of education, you might have more education coming your way, but you're kind of more at that beginning of your career path. And what advice would you give our audience who they might be thinking about working or maybe working, especially for some of those younger folks or family who have younger people in their lives who are where you're at. Um, what advice would you give them about opening and investing in an ABLE account? Well, I completely agree with what everyone has said. Um, one thing that was just coming to my mind is just living with a disability. There are so many systems and services that you have to navigate in so many obstacles and you sometimes feel like you're always just hitting against a brick wall and making no progress. But with an ABLE account, it kind of allows you to take the power back yeah. and be in control of it and just say, you know what, I'm going to take my money and I'm going to put it into my ABLE account and I am going to do whatever I want with it to improve my quality of life um, and just to build financial freedom. And I think that's so important. And I mean, I opened my PA ABLE account in 2017. So like a little after the 2016 mark, but still like if I had been, if I was a family and I had a child, um, with a disability and I just start to put money in like time is the one like resource that you can't get back right. and so just having it to build and just have it there just in case anything were to happen or just to build that future it's invaluable so that's what I would say Thank you, Taylor. This was great advice from our panel. Um, I hope it was helpful for all of you. I'm going to share my screen again, just to go back um, and, and can't thank our panel enough for being here with us. The work they've done with this is really significant um, in, in developing so many of the resources. Um, here again, you know, do please check out Evelyn RC's resources. I hope you've seen the latest newsletter where uh, some of the material and information on employment and ABLE accounts and the support ABLE accounts can provide during an employment journey um, are located in, in many of the other information and resources we talked about here. I do want to mention too, just as we're wrapping up, um, to do, please check out our two decision guides, the Ready and Able to Work and Save decision guide um, in particular, and as well, all of the other able decision guides. They're a great place to start. They're fairly new um, and they continue to grow. But much of what we talked about, you can find support there as, as well as checking out the stories of other able account owners and family members, such as Taylor and Emily and Eric and Simon. We have listed here, and I know Cheyenne has shared in the chat, the link to this PowerPoint. These are all hyperlinked here, how to get to our able to work fact sheet, we have an ABLE and student earned income exclusion work support for transition age youth <laughs> fact sheet that's long, but it's important. Um, we have our ABLE to save podcasts where you'll see those two newest ones on ABLE and self-employment. Um, if that's a path you're considering, those are great to hear and check out. Um, the decision guides as well as our ABLE employer toolkit and our ABLE service provider toolkit I wanted to highlight. We have others as well, but those might be helpful and of interest to you also. Finally, as we're wrapping up in our last minute here, I wanted to get on everyone's radar, our upcoming webinar. Um, we do have a series of ABLE program spotlight webinars that feature the different ABLE programs across the country, of which there are over 45. Um, and some of them are in large collaborations. Um, many of them are open nationwide. We like to feature them so you can learn more about them. So in November on the 29th, 
Tuesday the 29th, and you can register here is the link. Uh, we have our Able Now and Able America webinar. So come check that out. We encourage you to sign up for that. And, and finally, I just want to thank all of you for being here with us today. Um, and we really hope that today's information was helpful to you, gave you some insights, some ideas, maybe some support around how you may be moving forward or helping others in your life or your network to move forward um, with increasing your financial independence and well-being with an AVIL account. So with that, I'll just ask you if you could please just fill out the post-training survey and let us know what you thought of today's panel and the resources that were shared. We greatly appreciate that and your feedback. Um, and take care, everyone. Have a good rest of your day.